What's up, everyone? D Crack here. Hey, what's up, guys? And first of all, I just want to give a shout out to Big Sister Wolf. She's been a long time subscriber to my channel. And I did a live stream the other night, and she said, why haven't you been reacting to Mr. Nightmare D Crack? And I know there's like three or four Mr. Nightmare videos I need to catch up on. So I'm going to try to catch up on the Mr. Nightmare videos that I need to watch. But this is the first one that I have not seen yet. It says three disturbing, true, traveling horror stories by Mr. Nightmare. Link to original video down below, guys. Um, let's go ahead and check it out. Like I said, by Mr. Nightmare. All right, guys, here we go. I'm a big solo traveler. My friends are usually too busy or can't afford to constantly fly to a million different places. So I do a lot of it myself. I, I to San Diego definitely for my first time alone. can't afford it. I've <laughs> been to most of the major cities in California, except for San Diego. So I wanted to check it off my bucket list. I stayed in a decent hotel, very close to downtown. As I checked in, I met a guy a little older than me in the lobby. He struck up a conversation with me about where I was from, how long I'd be here for, and if I'd ever been here. It was apparently his second time here, and he was also alone. He offered to take my bags to my room for me, since he was going upstairs anyway. I'd be like, no thank you. I accepted you. his offer, appreciating no, thanks. his kind gesture. I can carry he my own my bags. bags to the elevator, <laughs> and we went to the second floor to my room. Oh my god. He set my bags down outside my door, and said it was great meeting me, and to enjoy my stay here. I thanked him again, and he left down the hall. I let myself into the room, set my bags on the bed, and laid down for a bit just to get a quick nap in. When I felt refreshed, I went back down to the lobby and was about to head outside when the lady working the front desk called me over. She asked what that man did when we went upstairs, and I told her he just helped me with my bags to my room. She then warned me that that man had been standing outside the hotel for a while, and she noticed him come in moments after I came inside. She told me that she was fairly certain he wasn't staying in the hotel, and if I see him again, I should stay away from him. A little weird. This was, of course, very unsettling. Yeah. I hope she was uh. wrong, and he was actually just a nice person. But to be safe... Yeah, why would he be standing outside for hours and then just randomly offer to help that guy with his bags? A little suspicious. I would listen to her. A little weird. I went out <sighs> and explored and had myself a day. I came back a few hours later to change into different clothes for dinner. There was a different person working the front desk now. In the hotel room, I showered quickly, then changed into different clothes and laid down for another quick power nap. During this time... There was a knock at the door to my room, followed by a quiet male's voice saying housekeeping. I didn't order housekeeping, and it was my first day there. It's not, it's Maybe that dude. It's I that creepy dude. The door, uh. And I didn't see anyone in the hall. That was beyond strange. Then immediately, that man from earlier came into my head. What if it was him? I ignored the knocks and went to my phone to call the front desk and ask them if they had sent housekeeping to my room. And of course, they said no. So I asked for someone to be sent to my room for my own safety, and five minutes later, a hotel maid knocked on the door. I opened it and explained politely the situation to her, and thanked her for coming. I then left the hotel to go to dinner. After dinner, Is that I guy going to stalk her? And explored some of the happening areas of the city at night. I got back to the hotel room around 10. I went up to the front desk worker and then explained what happened earlier, with the man I met who I feared may have been pretending to be room service to get into my room. I then asked her why? if she had seen anyone of his description walking around the lobby. Why is he want her no. her and why does he want to get in his room though? She checked the live no. surveillance camera of my floor and no one was in the halls. I thanked her and went upstairs to my floor and then to my room. I changed out of my clothes and laid in bed and put on the TV so I could fall asleep to something. Within the hour, I was drifting into a sleep. What I was hearing from the TV was kind of turning into a dream in my half asleep state. So when I heard a door closing, it became part of my dream. I didn't actually wake up until I felt the mattress start shifting as some- What the hell? How did that guy get in his room? Did he steal one of the, the cards? You know, you have a card you have to swipe on the hotel room door to open up the room? Did that dude get like one of those cards or something? What? Thing was putting weight on the other side. Oh, hell no. I looked no. over my shoulder to the other side of the bed. 
and I saw a man in a black COVID mask and baseball hat getting onto the bed, reaching for me. He grabbed me, trying to cover my mouth so I couldn't scream. But I managed to fight him off for long enough what to scream bloody murder. What the hell? He continued to try to cover my mouth, but I kept struggling and resisting just long enough for someone to start knocking on the door. I screamed help, and by this point, surely the man knew this wasn't going to go his way anymore. He let go of me and opened the door and shoved the woman who was knocking to the floor, and she saw him run down the hall to the stairs. The woman came in to make sure I was okay, as I was in complete shock what followed by tears. What the heck? Others from neighboring rooms came to see what the commotion was about. Hotel staff came as well, and the police were called. Based on the hotel video footage, the man somehow acquired a master key, which yep. allowed him to access my room. How the hell the did he get a key? His identity, How did he get I a key to the room? To be the man who helped me with my bags the first day. I believe he wanted to find out what room I was in to later come back to. It's scary to think he may have done this successfully to somebody else. I tried my best to enjoy the rest of my trip, even though I went through something that will likely stay with me for the rest Wait, of my life. Wait, was this a man or a woman? The hotel gave me a full reimbursement for the entire stay, and they gave me a different room to stay in. Honestly, looking back, I probably should have pressed charges on the hotel. The hotel, of course, also gave all the necessary footage to the police department. I haven't ever been contacted to identify anybody, which sadly more than likely means the man was never properly identified or caught. You know what, guys? I honestly, I, I can't remember at the beginning of this if this was a man or a woman. Let me go back and see here. Or can't afford to kill her. My friends. Oh, okay. Story one by Megan. So I'm assuming Megan is a woman. Okay. Why, I, why did I think the story was told by a man? I, I don't know. Unless the guy was gay, I guess. But I, that makes sense that it was a woman. And this random guy at the hotel offered to help Megan carry up her bags. And then he somehow got a key to her room and tried to get in, or he got in bed with her. What the heck? I'm a big solo traveler. My friends are usually too busy or can't afford to constantly fly to a million different places. Yeah, I don't know. At the beginning, it didn't say it was a woman, but I guess it said it was by Megan. So let's go the to story of two. Story take place a few years ago, maybe in 2013 or 2014. Okay, story two is by Sophia, so another uh, woman. Okay. The events Sorry, of the story <laughs> take place a few years ago, maybe in 2013 or 2014. Honestly, I don't remember because the story is such a blur and I've eventually just blocked it out over the years. It was Christmas break and I was a freshman in college attending a university in New York City. With that New being York said, City. I was miles apart from my family who lived all the way in Bulgaria. Bulgaria? Not know where that is. Bulgaria is just a small country in Eastern Europe, right by Romania and Greece. Okay. Bulgaria's safety I've reputation heard of it. and regulation isn't really that good, but this story actually contrasts that. I was at JFK Airport, maybe just a few days before Christmas Eve, because my initial plan was to surprise my family and friends in Bulgaria. The airport very obviously was packed and loaded with a lot of people, making my traveling experience way more complex and difficult. After hours of security, luggage weighing, and waiting for time to pass, I finally was at rest when the first plane to Istanbul from Manhattan was setting off. Istanbul, the first plane ride was Bulgaria. Eight hours, so I was prepared to be somewhat miserable and sore for the classic eight economic hours? seating arrangement. Jeez. I was sat next to two men, unfortunately. For the record, I'm a five feet, 110 something pound woman, which didn't make it any better either. Okay. These two men were probably well over a foot taller than me and could easily overpower me. The man on the right to me was relatively quiet, black hair, glasses, and low-key ripped. The guy on the left to me, low however, key freaked me out. He would occasionally mumble to himself <laughs> quietly and would pick at his skin, sometimes even nudging his arm close yeah. to mine. Sounds like a I drug, note of the guy drug the addict. Me and tried my <laughs> best to have a decent eight-hour flight. The only thing keeping me productive was the fact that I'd be in my home country in less than 48 hours. But this productiveness got trimmed short when I'd be minding my business, maybe doing work or listening to music, and the guy left of me would be very bluntly staring at me. I tried shrugging it off. Well, that's maybe not creepy at all, is it? Lack social uh. cues. But as time went on, I started to doubt that. At some point during the flight, I was watching season two of American Horror Story. Ah, the man began speaking to me. I like that show. Asking why I was watching a show <laughs> that poorly represents the mentally ill, murderers, oh. and whatnot. Murderers? Very nervously and hastily. Is this 
dude like a freaking serial killer? What the heck? I asked him if he needed anything, since it's inappropriate to randomly disturb a stranger who's minding their own business. The season of American Horror Story I was watching was Asylum, which portrays cold-blooded murderers and insane people of a mental hospital. The guy looked me straight in the eye and said very candidly, I just think it's fucked up how everyone thinks people who skin others alive are crazy. I mean, aren't we all what? like that? Wait, what? I mentally began freaking out, what? asking myself who the hell was I sitting next Skin to? people Did alive? Did else hear that? I chuckled, brushing um, it off. I, to I don't know about you guys, but that's not something I do in my uh, my pastime. It's uh, skin someone alive. I'm unbothered. Jeez. For the rest of the flight, I was scared shitless, and I contemplated asking for an open seat that may have been available by the back of the plane. But nonetheless, the flight came to an end, and we arrived in Istanbul. I gathered my stuff as Istanbul. quickly as I could and escorted myself out of the plane as soon as possible. Now, I wish I could say the story ends there, but unfortunately it does not. The rest of my Christmas was fine, but what that man said still rung in my head like a bell. As January approached, I began packing up again to head back to New York. I was sorting out my tote bag and throwing out any old trash I may have stuffed in there from traveling when I came across a disgusting note that must have been slipped in there when I was sleeping. It read the following, I wish I could see what you look like under your skin. I really wish I took a picture of it as evidence, because only a month later into oh, February, there was a news article no. that my younger sister sent to me that basically talked about the same exact man from my plane ride being sent to jail for multiple accounts of rape, attempted rape, kidnapping, attempted oh kidnapping, my God. and first degree murder in Istanbul. Reading that Yo. article made me sick to my stomach. She was honestly, sitting next to a serial killer. To stay home for the holidays for a few years. Sophia was literally sitting next to a psycho serial killer. You've got to be kidding me. In the winter of 2018, to escape the cold weather, my girlfriend Claire and I took a week off from our jobs to go away to a nice beach resort in Mexico where the water was crystal blue and the weather was perfect. That's the resort was extremely affordable for a seven-day all-inclusive package. It had a buffet, three pools, was on the beach, had a million bars, an entertainment hall, and tons of group excursions. We were going to be there for a whole week, so we had a lot planned. The first couple days we relaxed around the resort, getting use out of the unlimited drinks package. The surrounding unlimited area drinks. of the resort was a Sheesh. lot of jungle and scenic-looking roads. So we took a private shuttle on the third day to the nearest car rental place. The shuttle driver warned us not to stray too far from the coast, as there are a lot of unsafe areas. We rented a Ford Fiesta. There weren't exactly any Mustangs or Camaros at this rental place. <laughs> the car rental that. place was in a small city about five miles up the road from the resort. There was basically this one long road that ran along a bunch of resorts, and next to this road was miles of jungle and occasional small towns. We drove Jeez, south on the huh? road until we ended up in Tulum. The actual city of Tulum was less appealing than I had imagined, considering a lot of my friends were always talking about wanting to go there. We drove through the Tulum area and then back up north. We found a dirt road into a jungle area and decided to just drive through it and see where it goes. On either side of us was just jungle, probably for miles. We drove down this wide dirt road enjoying the scenery and little off-roading experience. Though Claire seemed to think we shouldn't be on a dirt road like this in a rental in fear of dirtying it up, and I agreed. So we did a three-point turn and started heading back in the direction of the main road. Eventually, we were stopped by these three men walking out from the jungle onto the road. We both simultaneously said, um... oh no, knowing this could be trouble. I brought the car to a halt and lowered the window a little bit as one of the men came up to it and started speaking in Spanish. I said no hablo espanol, and things started to get a little heated. One of the other men came to Claire's window and knocked on it. I told her not to lower it. Drive off. The guy at my window Drive started saying off. money, money, and I saw the one man still in front of the car making his way to my window as well, and he pulled a knife out of his right pocket. Floor it. I stepped on the gas. Yeah, the car jumped hit the forward. gas and go. The three men were yelling and running after us, but obviously they couldn't run faster than a car. Our hearts were in our throats from that encounter. I didn't Jesus. let up on the gas until we made it off the dirt road. After that, we didn't really want to drive around anymore. We brought the car to the resort parking Dang. lot and left it there. We didn't want to return it yet, especially since the rentals there were so cheap anyway. The next day, after talking with some of the workers at the resort who recommended a beautiful nearby Cenote to check out, 
We drove the car Natural to another pit or similar sink looking hole. dirt path, very Flaps close of limestone. to the resort. Oh. We followed the workers' cool. directions and drove all the way to the end of the dirt road, then parked when we saw a sign for the Cenote. We found it without issue, and we were the only ones here, surprisingly. Oh we didn't gosh. See any other cars. That's not good, though. We followed the signs down this beautiful scenic They're there pathway. by themselves? It was a truly peaceful experience that unfortunately had to be ruined when we started feeling like we were being watched. Oh, hell no. We had some sixth sense. I mean, we literally heard rustling I hope it's not from those. all around us so, in the jungle. Oh my, it's, I told her, is it those same guys? We continued to follow the signs. And out from nowhere, a man came up to us, once again speaking Spanish. When I again responded no hablo espanol, he started to attempt to speak in English, and I understood him to be trying to tell us to come with him, that he'd lead us to the cenote. No. Claire and I looked at each no, other nervously. No, no, no. followed the man. He was leading us a different way man. than we were originally going. Don't follow like we him. following the signs anymore. Oh my God. Claire tapped me on the shoulder and then pointed at the man's back pocket. They're about to kidnap the you. the handle of a large knife in his back pocket. I whispered to her to run and then pushed her to start running and I followed close behind. The man noticed and started running after us, but thank the Lord he was slow. We were easily outrunning him. Oh we made my it back God. To the car. Why would you first, follow him? chasing us. But as soon as we got in the car, three people emerged from the path we just came from and tried opening the car doors. What? They then started hitting the glass trying to break the windows open. Before any of them could actually break the windows, we were already moving. Claire was crying. Hell, I wanted to cry too. No. Two days in a row of this. No, no. We officially hated this place. We brought the car back to the rental shop, and luckily there weren't any dents or anything from being pounded on. Just some dirt stains. I would hate that place we too. Back to the resort Jeez. From there, and we didn't leave the resort again until we left days later for the airport. We warned the resort staff about the attack so they could warn the guests. We haven't returned to Mexico since, but I'm honestly not sure if we ever will. Even in what was supposed to be a safer area by the resorts, two days in a row we barely escaped being robbed and attacked. You know what, guys? I've never, I've never been to Mexico personally. Um, no one in my family's been to Mexico that I know of. Well, actually, my brother-in-law and his wife went to Mexico last year, but they went to a, a resort. They didn't have any issues, but I don't think they left the resort. Mexico is a very beautiful place, but think about it. They said it in this story, it was supposed to be a safe area near the resort, but criminals and people who live there in Mexico know that there's tourists and people visiting the resort and they know that they have what money. If I ever went somewhere out of country, out of the United States, like Mexico or somewhere, I probably would not leave the hotel or the resort area unless it was on like a guided tour or I went with somebody that I trusted because I'm not about to get my ass robbed or killed. <laughs> but guys, three disturbing true traveling horror stories by Mr. Nightmare. I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. Hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel if you're new. Leave a comment down below. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.